Our scripture reading (coughs) is taken from Matthew chapter 11, beginning with the 25th verse. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one who knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This past week, Ina Grace and I, my wife and I, celebrated a wedding anniversary and it was the first day, it was last Friday actually, it was the first day that the restaurants in Chicago were able to serve people indoors. And we went to a nice restaurant and we were seated indoors. There, our tables were about 10 feet apart. I've never sat so far apart in a restaurant. We sat a great distance apart and very much enjoyed our meal. But one of the things that made the meal especially nice was that I had ordered ahead to have some flowers, a vase of flowers delivered that could be placed on our table to make the celebration even nicer, especially for my wife. And so we enjoyed those flowers all through the meal. And when the meal came to an end and it was time to leave the restaurant, I bravely picked up that vase of flowers to carry it home. I had no idea how heavy that vase was or how much heavier it was when it was filled with water. But as we started down the sidewalk, walking the many blocks to to where we live, I was astounded to discover how much weight a vase of flowers gains as you walk down the street with it. It gets heavier and heavier and heavier. Those pounds seem to accumulate in your arms like magic. Well, it wasn't too long before this out of shape old man discovered that his biceps weren't as strong as they used to be. My arms weren't as strong. I'm not as young, I'm not as agile. And uh, it wasn't much longer before I could hear my biceps talking to my brain and saying, hey, Paul, you got to do something about these flowers. Well, at that moment, my loving wife said to me, why don't I carry them for a while? And she took the burden off my arms. I could then lower them. And when I lowered them, the blood could flow back back into the muscles and restore them, renew them, so that a few minutes later, I could pick up that vase and continue carrying it home where we also enjoyed it. But I gained new appreciation that evening of this text. Come to me, all you who labor, who who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Those are wonderful words spoken at the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount in the way Matthew puts the gospel together. But as I reflected on it, I'm quite aware that most of us accumulate in life burdens far heavier than a vase of flowers that that vase of flowers is nothing compared to the load that many people carry through life. Life can be hard. People treat us unfairly. Sometimes the law treats us unfairly. Loved ones become ill and die. 
leaving a huge gap in our lives. And we often don't know what to do with these heavy burdens. They can just weigh us down. In this, in this city, the city of Chicago, there are families suffering from the loss even of young children due to gunfire. What a tragedy, what a shame, and what an outrage. But the burdens are heavy, heavy, and people need relief. The world doesn't help us much. It likes to give us slogans. Buck up, or pull yourself up, or the big one, keep quiet. Don't tell us about all your woes. We've got enough to carry on ourselves. We don't need to hear about your troubles. So just be quiet. Let us be in peace. And yet Jesus has a very different message. Come to me, he says. Bring your burdens here. I'll carry them a while. What a great message to hear. The early Christians took this message very, very seriously as they formed their own little Christian communities around the Roman Empire. The Apostle Paul wrote to a cluster of churches in the province of Galatia, and in his letter he said to them, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens. Well, that's quite different from the slogans that our society gives us. It says we're not alone. It says we don't need to be alone. That we all suffer together and we all rejoice together. This is not a situation in which one has to be all alone, carrying heavy, heavy burdens. There are some of us who've learned this lesson. In fact, we've learned it so well, we're never home. We're so busy carrying burdens for our, for our community, <laughs> or for our nation, or for our family, or for our friends, and for our neighbors. One, one young woman wrote about her mother, and this is what she said. She said, my mother died carrying water. She was hauling a 24-pack of bottled water to my brother's dorm room. She was proud of him because he was about to launch his college career, a big step in our family. She'd struggled to raise two children who themselves had struggled immensely along the way. My mother was tireless, indestructible, high energy, as she described herself, but lately she had seemed worn to me. Aside from a high-powered law career, she spent the last few decades caring for her husband, her children, the community, her grandmother, and her mother. When I first learned of God as a child, I remember thinking, he had nothing on mom. Well, there, <laughs> there are a lot of moms and pops like that. Those who have learned to carry others' burdens and do it very, very well and very, very often. This is the 4th of July weekend when we think about our nation and celebrate it. It's a, it's a tough year for celebrations. What we're finding today is demonstrations. And uh, quite frankly, I find them more encouraging than the celebrations. Demonstrations. I like the way the, the Reverend Dr. William Barber has put it, talking about this weekend. He says, the vision of America is still coming into being. 
It's only recently been born and it has certainly not been realized. All of the dream that that vision has has a long way to go before it's fully realized in this country. Now, Dr. Barber is an African-American man and he knows what life is like for African-American people in this country. He knows how racism has been built into the structures of the nation, how it's the original sin of our nation. And yet, this is what he says in a country where policemen can suffocate people to death. This is what he says. He says, in this holiday season, when we sing about liberty and justice for all, that's a nation trying to breathe. When we say all persons are created equal, that's a nation trying to breathe. When we speak of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that's a nation trying to breathe. I hope he's right. But we as Christians in the church today, we are called to help the breathing along. We are called to demonstrate a different way of life that doesn't take unfair advantage of others but rather honors and respects people as they are, no matter who or what they are. We are the people who say, not buck up, not pull yourself up, but rather we say in the words of Jesus, come, if you are weary and carrying heavy burdens, Come, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen.